Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Fox and in today's video I would like to showcase my brand new universal PVE tank build. I've put this build together so that you need to make a total of zero changes regardless of the end game PVE content that you would like to take it into. Iron Horse, Dark Hours, Legendary Summit, Legendary Stronghold, you need to make literally no changes. This build will perform exceptionally well across the board um, and it is very simple to put together, to farm and to use. What we're bringing to the table with this build is not only what a tank would usually do, which is high survivability through armor regen and possibly tardigrade, we are also um, offering a lot of synergistic talents that will enhance our team's DPS as well as improve their survivability, which for those of you that have played a tank in any looter shooter or MMO style game with RPG elements, you'll understand that that is actually key for a tank. You're not just a bullet sponge. And whilst this build offers all of that, it is incredibly simple to play. So what we will do in the usual fashion is go through the build first so I can explain why I've chosen the pieces that I have, where to get them from, um, and just how easy it is to put together. I will demonstrate quickly in the firing range just how it works as well so you can understand just how much additional DPS you bring to your team. Um, and what I'm then going to do is load solo queue into a match-made legendary summit. So I'm going to be playing with some people that I don't usually play with, probably won't be on comms, just to demonstrate this build can perform and hold its own even in that scenario. Now, of course, you would usually play a tank build in in-game content on comms because it is important for your teammates to focus what you are focusing so that they gain the additional damage that you're providing. But ultimately, it will still perform well even in that match-made legendary content, which hopefully you'll see very shortly. I will, of course, timestamp all of this below. And for my longer-term subscriber base, you will know that I do not include adverts um, in the center of my videos, only at the, you know, the beginning and the end, just for a bit of support for myself. So... You know, feel free to use the timestamps if you want. You can watch this in parts. There's a lot of useful information throughout, admittedly, but yeah, you know, go, go to whichever part you feel you want to. Um, you will also see in the description below, along with those timestamps, my Twitch channel and my Discord server. So if you do want to get into the Discord server to start getting some raid groups together, we already have a team in there that pull people through. We get loads of notifications from Massive on there as well. So if you ever want to know about updates or patch notes or maintenance times, no longer we need to Google for it. It's all in that server. And my Twitch stream is predominantly for PvP, um, but again, feel free to check it all out. So, with all that out of the way, let's go straight to the build. Okay, so here we have the build. Now, I know you probably already noticed the unusual colour format here, the gear set showing as blue. I do run colourblind settings. There's nothing wrong with my vision, although a lot of the people I play PvP with would probably uh, not agree with that. Um, I just prefer it because it does give a nice overlay to ground skills such as stingers and so on. Uh, very powerful in PvP, actually, but... Uh, yeah, just so that that's all that is there. I know a few people have questioned why the colour scheme on my build seem a little bit odd, so just wanted to clear that up straight away. Now, the build that you see before you is by no means revolutionary. A lot of people run a very similar combination to this, but they don't run this exact combination. In fact, in all of the months that I've been playing this game, I've only ever seen one person run the exact combination, or very similar to what I'm rocking, um, a very specific weapon and talent combination, um, which is Beliscatron, who's just a Xbox friend that actually was in one of my recent streams. He runs a more advanced version of this build, but he understands the team synergistic, um, the team synergy part of this build. And yeah, he, he actually runs something almost identical. So that's great to see that. But for the most part, I don't see this. And by running this very simple combination, you can really enhance what your team do. And, you know, if you are running this in, say, four-man legendary summit where you may feel the DPS loss is too high, well, I can promise you it won't be. Through the combination of buffing everybody's damage quite substantially, I might add, and giving them loads of survivability via tardigrade and just taking all of the heat away from them whilst pushing those objectives, your teammates will adore you for it. You just make it so easy to run through legendary content. And you yourself have great survivability even without a healer. You will have a healer in a raid, which makes it even better, but honestly, you don't need it. You can run this throughout Iron Horse without the need of a healer. Yes, Pfizer can be a little bit hairy, you know, the, the second boss where you need all of the burn resistance, and this build includes all of that. So again, as I said before, no changes are required on this build, regardless of the content. For the most part, this is incredibly self-surviving. So let's get started. We're going to just start from the top, the specialization, and work our way down. Um, and then, of course, I will show you quickly what this looks like in the firing range in terms of the additional damage, and then we will load into that content. Now we are running the uh, demolitionist specialization most importantly for the 20 percent burn resistance for the iron horse raid that is kind of the main reason for this now i whilst i said that this is a universal build if you are only ever going to run this in legendary content i actually prefer firewall for theirs it does offer more benefits to the team 
in terms of the 10% additional damage they gain just for you being within 10 meters of an enemy. Now they can be any distance from the enemy, it's based on your proximity to them. So again, this comes down to your, de your damage dealing, your DD teammates need to be focusing the enemies that you are. That's very important with this build. Not that that's difficult to do because for the most part you'll be keeping a boss busy and obviously they'll be shooting the same boss, but still. Um, you also gain a very powerful striker shield and we do use a shield with this build which you can swap between the crusader and the bulwark again in certain places an iron horse you will need to do that but again that is just a tiny change from one shield to another the specialization we're using today though gives us the burn resistance so you don't need to worry about taking that off if you don't want as we are immune to burn what it also does is give us the ability to absorb explosions every 60 seconds not particularly frequent but can be very life-saving in legendary where I swear every Grenadier is an NBA pro player. They're just insane. They do not miss at the moment. So that can be very useful for that as well. And also it gives your teammates 5% damage to targets out of cover, a multiplicative value that will give them a nice little DPS buff just for you existing, just for you running Demolitionist. So definitely my top choice here. Um, and as I say, if you run it like this, you don't need to make changes regardless of the content. Now, the most important part of this build in terms of the team synergy part, and I, just to clarify, when I say team synergy, I am actually going to be addressing this in an entirely separate video in the next seven days or so. I'm going to be showing you all how you can run your DPS or DD builds, healer builds and tank builds again in endgame content by making tiny changes to your build that drastically enhance the damage of the entire team. So that's what, when I say team synergy, I mean that your build is there to improve everybody else's. And if everybody has that mentality, you know, I, I can promise you that in that next video, you will take your raid boss kills from minutes, if that's how long it's taking you, to seconds. You'll be able to kill um, the first boss, Lieutenant Grey, or Lieutenant Gary, as I used to think he was called. I don't know why, it's pretty obvious it's a four-letter word, but apparently I can't spell. Um, you can kill him in less than 10 seconds if you pay attention to the tricks and tips I'm going to show you in that Team Synergy video. Some of you might be already doing that. In that case, that video might not be for you. But for those of you that are not, get those notifications turned on and watch out for that video. The main way that we are doing that is with a combination of Scorpio, the shotgun that you see before you. This is an exotic shotgun that was available last season. However, you can still get this by farming targeted loot. It drops anywhere in game. Can be a little bit rare. Um, so if you haven't got this, you definitely need this. It is crucial for this build. And I wouldn't even try to put this exact version together without it. That pairs beautifully with the backpack that we are running, utilizing the opportunistic talent. So why is this such a good combo? Well, there's about three or four reasons why these two work better than any other combination for a tank. Don't forget, as a six blue tank build, you are not going to be providing much damage. So what you need to do is enhance everybody else's damage as much as possible without taking away from what you are doing as a tank and without making your playstyle complicated. This build is not complicated. It is easy. You shoot stuff, they die faster. It's that simple. So opportunistic, if you just read that talent on the right there, enemies that you hit with a shotgun uh, or a marksman rifle amplifies the damage they take by 10% from all sources for five seconds. Now that five seconds is immediately refreshed at the moment you fire a new shot. So this is 100% uptime on those more difficult targets such as raid and legendary bosses, rogue agents, heavies and warhounds. Very, very powerful talent. And because it is amplified, for those of you that don't know, that is the single greatest type of damage buff that you can achieve, as it is a multiplicative value that is only applied right at the end of the equation. What does that mean? If somebody's hitting tons of damage with their build, they've got all their own amplified and multiplicative talents, they will now do 10% on top of all of that. It's just right on top of everything they're already doing. Very, very powerful. And yeah, it is a noticeable increase in DPS. But that's not all. Scorpio enhances this quite a bit further. So if we have a look at the talent there, if I can just get that to line up in the middle, when you shoot a target, it applies a stack of venom, which lasts for 10 seconds. <clears throat> now increasing the stacks does add more debuffs. So one, three and six shots gives you the poison, destroyed and shock. This is really powerful. Poison doesn't um, stagger very well outside of, uh, I mean, it doesn't heroic content, but in legendary and raid content, the resistances are quite high to, to hazard, to status. The Disorid and Shock always staggers. Um, Shock even does versus Warhounds. I know that bugs out sometimes, but for the most part it does. So by creating a stagger effect, essentially where the boss, rogue agent or whatever, has to stop and deal with the subsequent status effect, that is a nice little window where they are not moving. All of your DPS can just laser their face off whilst gaining the additional damage that you've provided from Opportunistic. 
So this is a nice little way to keep your team alive longer to stop the boss from shooting. On top of all of that, in your raid groups, if you are running a survivalist, which you absolutely should be, and again, I will address that in more detail in the Team Synergy video coming out in the next week or so, that is a further 10% damage to everybody else in that group, four or eight man. Now you're applying status effects all of the time, so this is just free damage. And don't forget this stacks with everything else that we've discussed today. On top of all of that, the seventh shot, that target now takes an additional 20% damage. So just for firing seven shots into a boss, you're giving opportunistic for the 10%, 20% from Scorpio, you're giving a further 10% from the survivalist in your team, you yourself are giving 5% to everybody else from the demolitionist damage to targets out of cover trait. This is a massive amount of additional damage just for running this combo. No reason not to do it. I highly recommend you get on board with this. For your second weapon, I would again strongly recommend a, an AR as it gives the damage to health. Once you've applied all of those buffs and the five second opportunistic window is counting down, you can swap to this and actually do a surprising amount of damage versus heavies and health based targets. Um, but it's always good to have a long range weapon that's well rolled with some good values on there. And I like something like Optimist because again, like the rest of the build, it is a simple talent that only requires you to fire your gun and not mess around with anything else. So that, that'll be my recommendation. Not that important though, but what is important is that you bring one of two, excuse me, you bring both of these options for your sidearm. Now to clarify, sidearms do not use ammo. In certain types of content, particularly if you're running with a lesser experienced group whose DPS maybe isn't quite there, you may find that your ammo starts to run low. Now again, in a eight man group, you should have a gunner on your team. This isn't usually important as there are um, ammo caches pretty much everywhere in the raid and to a lesser extent in legendary content, but you might find that without a gun on your team, your ammo consumption is a little bit high if your teammates are not focusing the targets that you are shooting as of course this build doesn't do as much damage as them. So with that in mind, you will want to run the backup boomstick as your sidearm. This is classified as a shotgun. It has unlimited ammo. It packs one hell of a punch, um, even on a, a six blue build. And this also applies the opportunistic talent. No, we don't gain the additional benefits from Scorpio, but if you've run out of ammo, it is what it is. So if ammo consumption you are noticing is a problem, you want to bring the backup boomstick or just a shotgun uh, sidearm. The other option, which I think is probably better, is the named card pistol that comes uh, at the moment as an exclusive dark zone drop. So you want to get in the dark zone when it's pistol targeted loot or just in general. Uh, we have a lesser chance of finding it and it was available last season if you already have one. This gives you plus one skill tier. Why is this useful? Well, remember what I said, a tank's job is not just there to sponge bullets, they are there to help their team, to improve their damage, to improve their survivability. So by having this on, you wanna be running a, um, a res hive. Now, I've got my Scorpio shotgun on me at the moment. You can see, if you look on my buff bar there, that I have one um, charge on my hive, because of course, this is a six blue build. By swapping to the pistol, we gain plus one skill tier, which gives us two charges. If somebody goes down, you can throw this, you can then swap away, we still have two charges. So what's essentially happening is you have one charge on your res hive, somebody goes down, you res them, you pick up your res hive, you still have one charge on your res hive for if you go down. This is a really powerful little trick that again so many people fail to use and this works on any build if you're a, a DD. Um, I, I mean, I know a lot of people don't run res hives in the raid. Uh, tanks, I think it is a pretty useful thing to do because they never need to swap their skills for the most part. So I do think it is good for a tank to run it. But for anybody that's running it, it's a nice little trick there and highly recommended that you bring both of these to your loadout just so that you can swap between them depending on your ammo consumption. So the backpack itself, we know it's opportunistic. The best in-slot brand set for this is Bellstone Armory. The reason for that is that an ideal amount of armor regen for just a good amount of survivability without a healer being in range is between 40 and 50k. Now Bellstone gives us 1% armor regen and if you look in the bottom left there you'll see my armor is at 2 million. So this is a very noticeable increase in our armor regen. If you can't get a Bellstone backpack rolled in the way that I have, that is fine. A great alternative, and I know Belliscatron actually runs this same. My second choice is Gilla. It gives you more armor, which equates to a larger amount of armor regen, as the gear set we are using also has a percentage-based armor regen value, and it gives you a bigger tardigrade proc. So Gilla is a fantastic second choice, and my third and final choice, the worst of the three, but still viable, would be Badger Tough. But definitely if you can get the Bellstone, um, I would absolutely recommend that. That is why this build is universal and it has the combination of Armour Regen and Hasbro. The two minor attributes that you ideally want, Hasbro is a must, Armour Regen is a great second minor attribute. If you can't get it and you can only get crit chance or something else, don't worry about it, you'll still be fine. 
but having the additional armor regen along with the most important part hasbro is absolutely fine so that's what you want to be looking for is your combination there and of course opportunistic on the backpack so this exact role with a bit of optimization is perfect for this build we are running tardigrade as well this also has a minor attribute of armor regen which again helps to aid to our, add to our survivability now, I do want to quickly address this before we carry on. There, I have had a lot of discussions with people saying that um, Vanguard, so the, the, the Giller name chess piece, um, the Point Man, is better. You are absolutely right. It is better because it has higher uptime on the bonus armor. However, that is a more advanced tank loadout. If you are running two tanks and Iron Horse, we, we don't anymore. We just run the one. Um, but if you are running two, then you want to have one on Tardigrade and one with the Point Man, as neither of those stack with each other. So doubling up would be pointless. But Tardigrade is better, I think, for the majority of players, as it does not require any thought process. This procs without you doing anything other than wearing it. And at the end of the day, if somebody's about to go down, you're not always going to know that in time to pop your shield. Sometimes you'll pop it and then they'll need the armor. It's just how it goes. So on paper, the point man is better. But in real world application, I will have to disagree and say that Tardigrade is better because you get the bonus armor when you need it, which is when you're about to die. In PvE, it gives us 80% of our armor value, 1.6 million armor to anybody that breaks their armor and it's only 45 seconds per ally for them to get them back. Another advantage of Demolitionist is it's one of the easiest weapons to get a kill with on a tank build, and by doing so with that, if you see a bunch of red bars in the raid and you just call out, guys, can I just quickly kill this one in the back here? If you've noticed a few people have propped their Tardigrade, a couple of shots after you've popped in your first opportunistic shot from your shotgun, switch to your demo, grenade launcher, you'll kill that in one or two shells, which, you know, outside of maybe um, Razorback, you're not even going to use that ammo anyway everybody's cooldown including your own is reset so in my opinion this is not only similar if not better uptime on bonus armor with that combo than the point man but it doesn't require any action from your part you can just have this on people will use it it's done so that would be my recommendation there feel free to switch out to the point man if you want a more advanced version and you are very good at timing it and you have a very efficient team um, i'll let you guys work that out amongst yourselves but again i would still recommend tardigrade the gear set that we are using is the Foundry Bulwark. Now, whilst you need the chest and backpack from the raid and the blueprints from the raid, again, I've purposefully avoided that to keep this build simple and easy to farm for. You can get Foundry Bulwark anywhere in game. Just use the targeted loot system. Um, I don't know if it's anywhere at the moment. I can't see it on the map, but that's absolutely fine. What you could always do is just go to the summit um, and select that as your gear set, and then you can farm that. And whilst these four drop quite easily, um, you won't find the chest and back. But as I said, that's not important. So why are we running Foundry Bulwark over a more advanced tanking set like True Patriot, which is actually what, um, again, Belliscatron runs? Now, I personally prefer True Patriot as a tank um, gear set. It's the best tank gear set in the game. However, Foundry for this build is perfect. Again, keeping in with that universal theme, particularly powerful for those that are unfamiliar with tanking or looking to get into it. The armor regen and the survivability that this build offers with the Foundry Bulwark is insane. Yes, your team will achieve more damage if you run True Patriot, but there is a much greater chance that you will die, which means your team will get nothing. And a dead tank does nothing for their team. So Foundry Bulwark for me is best in slot for this build. We gain 10% total armor from the two-piece, which once again helps to give us a bigger tile grade proc. So that's helping our team. 1% armor regen and 50% shield health, which is actually really good on this build. That helps ourselves stay alive, which in turn helps our team and then the makeshift repairs talent for the four piece means that whenever us or our shield takes damage 20 percent of that amount is repaired to both over 15 seconds and this can constantly refresh as well so it's quite easy to juggle your own personal health with your shield um, again I, that's a little trick that i learned in overwatch funnily enough if any of you have ever played that before um, it is important for a tank to juggle their own personal health pool um, between their shields so that it is there when needed and this actually kind of works in the same theme so really really easy to stay alive this is additional armor regen on top of the armor regen value that we have now because this is so easy to farm for as it already comes automatically rolled to armor and you only have one minor attribute you can get this put together in minutes all you need is to roll every piece to hazard protection hazard protection on the holster on the knees on the gloves and on the mask the backpack as we know has hazard protection the most important minor attribute and if you don't have it you will need it so this might be the most difficult part to farm for potentially uh, but make sure it's on there and this only comes with armor region and explosive resistance which is fine for your two mods or your three mods sorry i would recommend that you run two burn resistances you see i've got a 9.2 and a 
and then a protection from elites. You could have incoming repairs, um, disrupt resistance, foam resistance. It depends on the content that you are playing. But again, in theme of keeping this universal with no changes needed regardless of the content, one protection from elites, two burn resistance mods will do you plenty. And I will show you why that is in just a second when we come to the stats. Finally, the skills that you want to run are none other than the Crusader Shield, or if you do decide to stop this to Firewall, if you're only going to run legendary content for the slight extra damage for your team, then of course the Striker variant of this shield. You can see it has 5.3 million HP with very high active regen and holster regen. And you need to make sure you are running the holster regen and the active regen mods. Don't worry about shield health or anything like that, or damage to whatever, just go with the regen mods. Trust me, it's just better for this build. If you are running certain points of certain rage, you will need to swap this out to the Bulwark, but you will be keeping exactly the same mod, so a very tiny potential change there. For example, a tank versus Morozova, the final boss of Iron Horse, you will absolutely need the Bulwark shield. And luckily, that works even better with the Foundry Bulwark. Your second skill will, of course, be the Reviver Hive. Again, this is not usually recommended to run this in raids, as when you need to swap your builds around, having this on a long cooldown can negate that or make that quite difficult. Um, but a tank, that's not a problem. You can use this for your own personal reses, or if you run the card pistol, you can res other people. One more way that we are helping our teammates out. And that's literally it. The combination of the ridiculous amount of debuffing that we are providing with the Scorpio opportunistic combo, the crazy amount of self-sustain we have from the Foundry and Bellstone combo, and of course the Tardigrade that not only keeps us alive but our entire team, this just makes this build fantastic in all content. If you have a quick look at the stats, now I, whilst the damage stats are not important on a tank build, one thing that I want you all to consider, and again, I will be touching on this in my PvE endgame Team Synergy video coming out shortly, your crit chance with a maxed out watch level will be 20% on this build. There is a 10% mod on the Scorpio and your watch will give you 10% as well. I like to think that the majority of you out there have already hit that 10% cap, so realistically you should be at 20% chance and 55% um, damage, right? Wrong. You are going to be at nearly chance cap and at not far from 100% crit damage. Because in all raid groups, if you are not doing this, your DPS should be running three Coyotes. Why is this? Well, Coyotes offers three separate critical hit chance and damage buffs. And in a raid, you can have all three of these active 100% of the time, permanent uptime. Again, I apologize if you all know this, um, you know, for the more advanced players out there, you'd be like, obviously, dude, everyone knows that. Well, actually, no, they don't. I find a lot of raid groups that I LFG for that nobody even has this conversation. If you have three Coyotes and all three of you grab the separate buff, let's just say, for example, I was the person that grabbed the short range buff um, and my other two teammates grabbed the mid and long range buff and then I accidentally shot somebody that was really far away, well, of course, that would change me to the longer range buff because it is range based. No, it wouldn't. If that buff is already taken up, your buff cannot move. So that means 100% uptime on what is essentially 35% crit chance and 35% crit damage. Now, I know that's not relevant on this build, and to be fair, I probably should have saved that for the Team Synergy video, so you just got a little one of the many tips and tricks that I'm going to go through with you all in that video. But ultimately, that then means that your build will actually hit pretty hard, even though you don't have any weapon damage on here, because of that crit chance and crit damage modifier you are getting from Coyotes. Obviously, in legendary content, that is far less likely to happen. But my point being that if you play the raid with the correct builds, you know, you're not taking that much of a DPS loss by having a tank build. What is far more important are our armor stats. 2 million armor, 48.7k armor region. Remember I said you want to be between 40 and 50k. 40k is the absolute minimum. I'm going to hit 50k once I've optimized. That's the place that you want to go for. But again, I appreciate that will take time. Don't forget that your Foundry Bulwark gear set will offer further armor region on top of this. But that doesn't show here because that's based on you taking damage. We have 13% protection from elites because of our mod. If you don't have one of these, not the end of the world, but it is very strong, so I highly recommend that you get on board with it. And we have 60% has pro. Again, I know it's 58.8, I need a bit of optimization, but this still works in the raid and everywhere else. Because of the combination of Demolitionist and the two burn resistance mods that I showed you all, our burn resistance is basically at 100% or very close to, and everything else is going to be at that 60% value. So very, very resistant. This is obviously important in Iron Horse for the burn resistance, but it is important everywhere else as well. Being burnt, disrupted, bled, foamed is a bad thing in legendary content. And whilst we're not immune to half of those things, we are incredibly resistant, which means that we can perform better in legendary content. You can literally face tank a heavy, not stand in front of your face. You've got to play your corners and use your shield and your personal health pool well, but you see the point I'm trying to make. So just to have a quick look at the, the damage that this build offers, um, 
you know sort of before and after the buff so I'm going to quickly show you that uh, let's just stick on I guess the card pistol um, so if we get this target changed to something a little bit tankier just to give you a rough idea and then what I'm going to do is load into that legendary content so without any buffs we are looking at 133 base and 193 crits remember those numbers 133 and 193 176 no it ran out okay so we went from 133 base to 176 base uh, I didn't get a, get a chance to get the crit number there but that's absolutely fine these values will be higher when you're in a ray grip with those coyotes so that's buffing, buffing my damage from 133 to 176 I know this is just a pistol but if that's buffing my own personal damage imagine what that is going to do to everybody else in your team if they're hitting 1.3 million then I'll go up to 1.7 million for example and it's probably going to be higher than that if they have multiplicative and amplified values in their build which for the most part they will do so this is a drastic drastic increase in your team's DPS and if that is eight people or seven other people in a raid shooting the same boss that you are remember I said that your boss can uh, kills can go from minutes to seconds I mean there's a few other ways to enhance that but this build is definitely one of them so with all that out of the way what we're now going to do is solo queue into some match made legendary content so I'll give you a little bit of gameplay just to show you what the armor region and the Hasbro looks like and that will of course bring the video to a close. Let's get started with that. Okay so we have loaded into a legendary summit. I know my radar's at the bottom which throws a lot of people off but you can clearly see the three chevrons and the three stars indicating that we are in legendary content. So, obviously you can see my armor bar there. The way that I like to play this is I won't use my shields too quickly. Now, you don't just want to run into the middle of the room and stand, like, you know, right up here to pull the aggro of everything because you will get melted. But what you do need to be doing as a tank is pushing objectives. So, for example, this thing just here, and this is not an objective, this is your job as a tank. You can see now that my health is starting to drop, but because my shield is taking damage, that will heal me and vice versa. So if you look at my armor regen here, this guy's now taking a ton of additional damage and what my teammates will, should be doing is focusing him. And it's literally that simple. You know, wait till your health gets low, whip out your shield, let your health get back to full again, continue firing. If your ammo gets low, switch to your, uh, where is it, the backup boomstick. If you're not having a difficulty with your ammo consumption, use the card for the extra res. It, you know, whichever one you want to bring to the table is your choice entirely. But the build is super simple to play. Now, yes, if you play um, poorly, if you do just run into the middle of a room when there's ads everywhere, you're going to die because the shield can protect you from this direction. But if there's something over here or over here, it obviously won't. So you still need to play your corners smart in legendary content and in the raid as well. Um, first things first is to tank your priority is always objectives. So look at that. There you go. See, that was a red bar. He did get staggered by the poison, which was good. But it's usually... See the animation there? That's about two seconds where this guy's doing nothing. When you see the shock, that means one more shot, because don't forget, shock is six shocks. Shock is six shots. That's really hard to say. Seven is the additional damage. So when you see that shot, you can fire one more shot. And I'm not saying you have to keep count. Again, this build is very simple to, um, to use. Just when you see the shot, one more shot. And then if you want to swap to your AR or something else, you can. So now we're getting some of that damage back. Again, I think shield taking more damage means that we will take or we will gain more armor regen and when your shield starts to get a bit low but your health gets full you swap out again you see my health is already full up no healer here now my shield is going up if you look at that little white bar above the um, armor value that's going up really fast if you if you feel confident with your survivability and you do have um you know a good healer on your team or just a competent team then swap it to true patriot it is a better tank set in terms of what it can offer in terms of damage for your team but honestly I would start with Foundry Bulwark and I mean this is my main tank build just because I don't need to mess around with it I don't need to change anything if someone says oh we've got a tank build for the raid yes I have if you do some legendary content yep I've got a tank build I don't need to switch stuff around I just have it I did use my tardigrade there so what I could now do is get a kill on this guy oh, I'm out of ammo okay I can't do that just yet that's fine but you can see that already my shield has full back up so I'm now going to focus these two and again it is down to your teammates to focus the stuff that you are shooting in order to get the damage what I really need to do here is actually find out where that uh, where is that box that's healing everyone oh it's gone now there we go shot over there so again I want to try and get 
the enemies in between me and my team. Or should I say, I need to be in between the enemies and my team. I need to make sure I'm not getting flanked. Anything that's a bit rougher. So these Grenadiers, these are the ones that's telling you about the duel, the damage. You definitely want to get these down first or focus these first. Taking a bit of damage now, so we're going to get our shield out so that we can take some damage. Let Foundry Bulwark do its thing. Now this guy over here, I just saw was running Scorpio as well. Yes, they do stack. If two people fire into an enemy, they stack with each other. So that means that you've only got to fire four shots and so have they in order to gain the maximum seven or eight shots. Um, so that's a nice little trick there as well. You won't often see that in Raid and Legendary, but it is a nice little feature. We'll probably do one more room just to showcase a bit more how the build is working. Um, but, you know, this is legendary content. I'm just running around the room. I'm taking loads of damage and then I'm getting healed straight back up again without... I mean, I've not used an armor kit. We don't have a healer. I've got no healing skills. You just put your shield out. It's it's literally that simple. Apologies for the small delay there, but my teammates do seem to be just chilling out in the background for some reason. I don't want to just wait at the door. Um, but this is another good example here. So you see this room. There are three computers. Now, this guy is probably about to do a cardinal sin, which is to start this computer straight away. I certainly hope you don't do that, buddy. If you see this, this is wrong. It is the tank's job to push the far back terminal and the other two players or three players or whatever to push... He has done it. I knew he would. To push them simultaneously. So if you don't have a tank in your team, how the hell are you going to get back here when there's all these enemies? So what that guy just did there, I'm sorry to call you out on the video, buddy, but that is not the way that you play uh, Legendary Summit. You need to push them simultaneously because you only get one wave of enemies and you're not struggling to get to the back computer when you've already summoned in all the enemies. Luckily, I'm a tank. So I can deal with this. But just a little thing there. I see that happen all the time. Stop doing it, people. Stop running in and just press, pressing the first computer next to you before your team are even there. Where is this Grenadier? This uh, drone controller. There we go. So that guy's already gone down because he decided to turn on the computer when nobody was here. Get this one turned on as well. But, you know, this is super easy for me to do this. I'm just tanking these drones. I mean, look at my... Uh, everything just going up. My shield's going back up. My armor's going back up. It's, it's, it's not hard. It's not hard to play. And this is why I say tanks are really good in Legendary Summit. More advanced and experienced teams would disagree with me because they're like, you're taking a big DPS loss. Well, with this combination, you are not. And also, if you've got somebody like this that, you know... Maybe he doesn't understand the mechanics. It's probably not his fault. They turned to this first computer. And you're in a squishy six red or six yellow build. And you're trying to get all the way over here. And there's this drone controller that's in cover. You see, none of us can shoot him. How the hell are you going to deal with that? You're going to be dead in a heartbeat. So tanks absolutely are viable. And nigh on a necessity in uh, Legendary. Um, particularly for the newer, returning and more casual players. But honestly, even for the advanced teams. You know, there's a pretty high watch levels in this group. So yeah, that, that, you know, I'm not going to go on any longer. That's that's kind of as much as I wanted to demonstrate. But please do let me know what you think. As I say, I know this build isn't revolutionary. You've probably seen very similar combinations out there. But if you do this exact combination, Scorpio and Opportunistic, trust me, you, your teammates are going to love you for it. You have great survivability. You can do any content with ease. And you've got a build that's going to basically carry you through that content. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for the support of hitting 10k subscribers recently. And if you do genuinely like my content, I offer very well researched builds for PvP and PvE, as you'll see if you go through my channel now. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for the continued support. Um, I will bring out that PvE endgame team synergy video in the next week. Yes, I will think of a better title. But until then, I will see you all in the near future. Peace.